Hey there, how you doing? My name's Andy White, I'm from Recruitment Marketing International. So this is ultimately how your search business is broken up into phases. Now, whether you've been in recruitment, been in search for a number of years, you would have been either working on the phone, or worked in an office whereby you would have seen the way that it works is 360. 360 recruitment is um, part of the reason why you will hit a ceiling. There'll always be an anomaly where 1% will get the, the big bill of status, but your business is broken down to three fundamental phases. So one is we need to bring the client leads in, and that also brings the qualified candidates in. So that means your inbox gets full with qualified clients, qualified candidates, number one phase. Number two phase is we convert the clients. So we, we have our inbox, we have a response from the clients, we then convert the clients, whichever the process may be, so face-to-face, -face, over the phone, Zoom, et cetera. Then we convert the candidates. So Mr. Candidate, we've got this epic role, we convert the candidate, send them, send them out for the interview, et cetera. Then get past guarantee period, deliver the candidates, and then we want to get into a cycle of fully retained business. If prove to the client we can do this form of service and we get repeat business if we do things properly. Now, what's interesting, if you look at your business here, so if I said to you what the metrics in your business, you're going to go into all sorts of fundamentals, right? So it could be number of send outs, could be hours you work, could be number of clients, calls you've got. Ultimately, your business is leads coming in, converting that lead, and delivering that candidate. And the only way you can improve each part of the process is you increase the volume either number of leads or you increase conversion. So that means if we can say, for example, 10 extra leads coming in, or how about if we can 10 extra lead, the conversion of the leads coming in? Or for example, if you have client appointments, let's say we've got 10 appointments this month for clients, but you're converting two out of 10, 20%. What would, what would it mean if you could 4X the number of appointments, but also double the amount of conversion? Now suddenly you've got a huge business, right? Just by changing a few fundamentals. It always comes down to these six dials. And we complicate, search, we way, way complicate things, that's it. So how do we actually make this a, a living, breathing thing? So in your business, you want client leads in your inbox, right? Qualified client leads in your inbox. And there are a whole ton of ways that you can do this. So these are some of our strategies here that we use inside the inner circle, right? But at any one point, a client, or well, a member of our inner circle, we use usually one strategy at max two. So what that means is we'll use this strategy, say for example, double R, double R, which is an automated process to bring leads in. And that would equate to getting leads in our inbox. So we've got A's, B's, and C's. So A's are, hey, yep, yeah, we're hiring or about to hire. We, we want to speak to you. B's are, we are maybe hiring in the next two, three months. C's are, it's not relevant. You're not a match for us. Now that shouldn't really happen because remember, we control all these strategies here. But anyone point in your business, you should be really running one one or two strategies to bring leads in. So in this case, let's say we've got double R, double R, which is a strategy whereby we identify how big the market is. So for example, let's say that we're dealing with healthcare and we work out there are um, 3,000 hospitals. In each hospital, there are 10 decision makers who may well choose to hire us or not. That's going to be 10,000. Sorry, if we've got 3,000 hospitals and we've got 10 decision makers, clearly we've now got 30,000 potential client leads, right? So we then want to have all of those inside our own CRM, inside our own database, and then we can put them through an automated process and we start getting responses. So A's let's speak um, now, or B's let's speak in, in a month or two, or C's not relevant. And the C's should not happen because again, we're controlling that data, i.e. We're, we're mapping out who those clients are, right? And very simply, you've got a process here. So we choose one strategy, we have an automated process, so in this case it'd be a sequence of emails that go out, if they respond to the email, they don't get the second email. But then what will happen is you'll get into this conversion process with the client that will come to you shortly. So here we get the A's, B's, and C's. So A's we will clearly want to convert now. B's we want to nurture for 12 months. And C's we may want to nurture if, we, if we've got a maybe a growing niche. But generally, as you can see red, we want to switch them off. But leads of clients should always come down to one or two strategies. It's a bit complicated nowadays. We're trying to do a dozen things. We're trying to do blog posting, LinkedIn. We're trying to do podcasting, like any one of these, a member of ours, for example, might use a, um, an avatar strategy. So they will, they will run an interview with, it, with their client, that will then turn to business. Someone else might use a MPC, most placeable candidate campaign, that will turn to business. So you want to use one or, one or two strategies at a time, max. Otherwise, you're going to have many, many different activities going on and you're going to hit a ceiling. So we'll power through this. So market, let's make this visual for you. So let's say we've got 
a market whereby for each of your clients there are five decision makers. Let's say we're dealing with um, let's say we're dealing with the automotive space, and in, in, in the automotive space we deal with um, research and uh, so R and D director, um, head of R and D, talent acquisition manager, etc. There's five decision makers. There are two thousand organisations in our niche, so there's ten thousand potential clients, right? We want those inside your database, or we'll just give you in visual terms, an Excel sheet to start with. So that means everything from first name, last name, contact, role, about 30, 40 different columns, right? We want all of that in your domain. So when you need clients, you can access this. We also want them inside your LinkedIn network, because I believe LinkedIn will start to charge even for connections uh, moving forward. I did a video many years ago on um, my YouTube channel, about seven, eight years ago, saying how I believe LinkedIn will start charging, and indeed they did. But if you're 10,000 clients in your market, you should own them. You should own them. Because the strategies that we can now do to own a market, I don't believe will be around in the next couple of years. I think we're sort of come to the end of a, um, a blossoming period. But those who have this are going to be in a very strong position. So in terms of market, we want to own the client side. We want to own the candidate side, right? So again, for candidates, let's say that we're dealing with, um, let's say we're dealing with, uh, Accounting managers. So we got a member right now. And if I pull this up, um, so this member here has been deals with. This is from a one of our our, our weekly Q and A calls. But you can see here. So they've they've got these job orders, right? They've sent 227. So they've identified 227 leads. They sent um, 505 leads in the second campaign. They brought in what? Three job orders from December that out initially. So that's brought in three roles at an average of 40, 45k each, right? So we're looking at over 100k. So that has happened now. So the roles are coming. So now they need to convert that. Now, what are they going to do when that happens is, well, they might stop the prospecting and they might go on manually and actually look for the candidate, right? So they haven't got the candidate inside their database. They haven't actually nurtured the candidate. But in this case, it's an accounting manager in a certain city in LA. Uh, so part of a uh, certain niche within LA. So in this case, if we've got them inside our database, we can simply run a sequence and then get a response rate from those candidates immediately, same day, without the manual up and down. So with the market side, how many candidates are inside our niche? So we map it in many different ways. It could be we do it by industry, by location, by role. But again, if they're inside your database, you've now got control. So moving forward, how do we get them inside our, our database? Well, we've got to think about your business as one size client, one size candidate side, right? But once we've got them actually inside our database, that's just one part of the process. We want to be able to convert the clients. How do we do that? So on the left-hand side, we've got what you might understand as your competitors. So it could be your client's got an opportunity to work with internal recruitment. So you might speak to a, a line manager, a business owner, and they will say, we've got internal recruitment, or we've got HR, or we've got a talent acquisition team. Or they might say we've got other recruitment search businesses that we we operate with or indeed we might have first supplies list so we have to use these six companies so how do you overcome these objections so what if you're a startup for example how do you how do you do this how do you overcome those objections well one way straight away is the following so let's say for example going back to our accounting manager example in that case if we can go back to the client and say, Mr. Mr. Client, did you know there are only 27 candidates to fit the exact requirements of the role that you want within the zip code that you, you, you've stated? There's only 27. Now, we've got those 27 inside our database. So when we send across three candidates, you're actually getting the top three from the top 100% of who fit that. So you've overcome the objection of you're a startup company and all the bits go around it, right? Because no one does this. Nobody does this inside talent acquisition or does it inside HR. So when you can make it really clear to them, we've actually understood exactly who your candidate is, how many there are. Now that that system, as you're explaining this, is going to do the conversion for you. So we call that client attainment system in simple levels. But you see, as you go up the model and you start to increase your authority, there's a different way of doing this. So converting clients, you always want to think one to many. You don't want to be having lots of one to one calls, repeating the same conversation. You want to have a system that allows you to separate you from the noise in the marketplace. And the noise is gonna be these three. These are your competitors, internal recruitment, there's gonna be other recruitment search businesses and a PSL. So the base of all this, you must have a client attainment system which details what are the numbers of candidates inside the niche. Step above, right? How to come down again, so converting clients. 
So what does happen? So let's let's say, for example, if we could 10x the number of leads coming in your business, right? And then we could double the conversion. So you close, so closing one and four, you close two and four. Instead of bringing in 10 leads, bring in 100 leads. Or let's be really pessimistic. Instead of bringing in 10 leads a month, you're bringing in 20 leads a month. So you double in there. If, what would be the double dual conversion? So for every every two you spoke to, you're closing one out of two, not one out of four. What would happen at that point? So now you've actually got the, going back to our model, we've got leads coming in, conversion. Now suddenly you've got a very powerful business, right? So when you convert clients, you must have a system in place that allows you to do this. It shouldn't be you being the awesome person that is you, able to convert client based on your industry knowledge or your personality. You need something systematic. So you want to use a framework for this. So in simple terms, you want to have a framework around converting your clients. Then you can replicate it, and it becomes something that you can repeat over and over again. So the, the mindset here has got to be, when you scale your business, we're scaling it because we're looking at understanding that your market is very, very simple. Also, you're in business. It's also one of the most difficult businesses. You've really got two parts of the business. You've got bringing clients in, and then you've got bringing candidates in. Think about a, a, a standard business. It will be one sale, right? You've actually got two sales going on at any one time. So that's why I get feast and famine, which is why you need to understand your business. It's just three, these three phases, and then you can put a, a step in place, a system in place to handle each part of this process. So coming back down to our conversion, you want to have a process in place whereby increasing the leads, so we've mapped the market, we're on automation, we've normally just one strategy, not dozens, and then when the leads come in, first of all, you'll continue converting the clients, but you, you want to hand this over to someone else in your business. So you want to be thinking, if, if you could take control of 5x in the leads and doubling the conversion, then doubling the, the amount of candidates actually get past guarantee period, whatever your constraint is with the candidate side at the moment, Suddenly, you've got a business that's six, seven, eight x what it was before, and your job now moves to being a business owner, not a recruiter. So, if you think about your business as a entity, an actual entity, and where you are right now, your what I usually see if you are a solopreneur is you get this feast and famine, and that's because you've gone through a client getting phase, and then you get the role they need the candidates. That means you haven't got a prospecting process in place anymore. So you've got ups, ups and downs going on, right? You get this feast and famine. Then what happens? Because you're spending your time either getting the client or getting the candidate, you've actually got no process in place for authority, which means you're now on this loop whereby it's going to be difficult to actually convert against your competition because you haven't got that authority. And then what happens? You get into this crazy eight loop where effectively you've got a well paid job and we get keep getting to this. We break 300k, then we go under 300k. It's usually that figure-ish, 20, 30% above or below what usually happens. So you want to be thinking about your business as just simply three steps and understanding, right, if I could get the lead side nailed, then I'm in, I'm in business. I'm in business. And converting candidates, I won't go through too much detail right now, but from your candidate piece, your candidates, why would your candidate move from one job to another job? So we need to get really clear on what drives that candidate. So if, for example, you've now got the client on, on board and now you're going to have to get candidates, if you're doing it one-to-one, -one, you're now back into that model whereby you're doing everything manually, right? So we need to have a system whereby these are our 30,000 clients or our 5,000 clients, whatever it might be. So this industry, these are the decision makers. Now these are the candidates that they want. So these are the candidates that they want either now or in the next 12 months. So it will be niche specific. So, for example, um, a girl's on the call. And Gail, we were speaking regarding having a different level inside healthcare. So if you look at the healthcare, inside healthcare, there's a whole set of different levels, right? So you could deal with uh, mental health. But underneath mental health, health might be three or four types of candidates. If you can really focus on holding down into those candidates, so rather than have all the candidates in health, you focus on a certain niche, now you can really drive into what will get them to move from one role to another role. And at a high level, normally, it might be a component of these four. So securing salary section of that role. So it could be tech. It could be exposure to a new type of um, part of the industry. But then seniority, they've got an Accenture model. But then again, if you're dealing with consultants, for example, with Accenture, the main one will be seniority. So it'll always change. 
So when you think about your candidates again, if you've got 50 different open roles now, which desire 50 different candidates, you've got a job where you will hit the ceiling. And we don't want to be doing that. We want to be always understanding that your business is very simple to break it down. So once we got our TNC signed, we can deliver CVs, go for an interview process, role gets offered, role gets accepted, the role gets started, get past guarantee period, and get paid. So if you look at your business from leads, there are a number of steps there, right? So how many in the market? How many have we actually put through a, a campaign? What was the reply rate? Then conversion, right? How many appointments did we have? Or how many candidates did we have? How many did we convert? And then deliver. There's only six certain set of steps here, right? So each one of these has got a number behind it, a metric. So you can grow very quickly in that way. You can grow your business very quickly. So one of the biggest drivers of, I've seen to success and one of the biggest pain points in, in creating failure is trying to do everything, trying to do 100 strategies at once, when in fact the, the model to get over seven figures is very simple. And it goes back to our understanding of this. The market has changed, search has changed. Leads, conversion, delivery. So whether you need clients, there is a binary number of clients out there right now who you can service. If you need candidates, there's a binary number of candidates out there who you can deliver. And when you start to look at this here, this is just really phase phase one. These are a, a basic building blocks, like step one. I consider it to be either start a business or indeed getting a business really powering forward again. So under authority, there might be a whole set of different strategies, but at a base level, if you're a solopreneur, if you break this down to these three fundamentals, you're going to have control. And each one of these is just a certain set of metrics that we can plug in. And so if this changes by a factor of 2x, what's the outcome? And you can see financial outcome. So guys, I'm conscious of um, there's an awful lot going on here. So any specific questions, let me know inside the chat box. Just wanted to um, answer a few questions. I know quite a few people have been emailing us. I'm going to answer some of those on a, on a group call. Um, so again, remember this, you're in what could be seen, deemed a real tough industry, right? You've got both the clients needed and you've got the candidates needed. So two, two businesses. However, also understand when we take a step back and we break it down, there's only really six numbers. The number of clients, candidates, conversion of clients, conversion of candidates, and delivered, then move into repeat business and retain business. These are dials, leads, conversion, delivery, you either increase the volume at each point or you increase the conversion. So for example, with leads, how do you increase conversion? Simply be a message. So why would one message get an open rate of 80% and a reply rate of 60%? And then in a, in a completely different industry, the same message get an open rate of 10% and a reply rate of 3%. It could be the technology. It could be because nowadays most recruitment tools do not even know if that message will land in the inbox. If we're running a webinar strategy, what would be our numbers? Well, how many clients have registered for that webinar? How many attended that webinar? How many booked a call with us? So guys, with that said, if you want to be quick, punchy, if you want to schedule a call, talk to me personally, you can head here. I'll put the link in the, in the chat box. Thanks for that. Sue, I'll tell you what I'll actually do then, Sue, is if you go to our website, thank you, Sue. There you go, I put it inside the chat box for everybody there, so you can check that. Well, head to our website, recruitmarketinternational.com, and you will see inside there yourself and click on booking, see a load of case studies. We really want to maybe put away some of the complexity that is instilled when in fact it's a lot simpler than we than we think. So with that said, just gonna just double check from your side, Sue. Um, would you recommend picking a domain to reflect the niche? Yes, yes. However, we got one member of one extreme in a niche of C suite, um, some middle market in the USA, and that's over five hundred thousand um, potential clients, and we've got others who are in a micro niche of of a few hundred, but there's always a, a number in between. Yeah. So, guys, with that said, um, feel free to send us an email um, support at recruitmarketinternational.com. 
on schedule the call. Love to to speak to you. If you see that you can understand the the methodology here, um, head to our website, click on case studies, have a look around. We really want to put away things that are more simple than maybe you understand.